Uh, good evening, Gambians. Good evening to those who will listen to this in the morning. Because even myself, I'm just planning to go to bed. Uh, but I did promise um, some people who follow or listen to uh, some of the audios we make on the WhatsApp that I will record a short clip on the need for Gambians to understand the media and to understand the different types of media going on or sort of being practiced by different Gambians. Um, since Personally, I'm not a journalist, but I've been friends with a lot of journalists and I've, and I've contributed my little quarter since the old Gambian.net. I think among the first Gambian uh, online newspaper, uh, you know, so I can at least say a thing or two about the media and the evolution of the Gambian media. You know how the Gambian media is changing. Uh, you say my connection is weak. How the Gambian media is changing and how that change, uh, you know, will impact on the way we understand issues, the way we connect with issues, the way we define issues, and the way we uh, relate to issues going on. Um, especially now that it's a new Gambia. Uh, new in the sense that the political dispensation and the dimensions of our politics will be taking uh, a much more smoother, a much more less aggressive, uh, a much more less um, uh, problematic. So this will sort of create new form of or new conversations, new dialogue. It will bring in more people into the tight space. So this is why I'm saying democracy can be noisy. Noisy in the sense that during the uh, the tick of the battle against Jamme, um, because he ruled with the iron fist, he ruled with fear, he ruled with aggression, he ruled with madness. So a lot of people are afraid to get involved. So the reason why some people got involved to fight, to see that that ends, is for us to have what we have today to have more people especially young people expressing themselves uh, getting involved and doing their little bits the reason why it is very paramount and important uh, for gambians to understand the different styles of media the different brands of journalism whether it's radio journalism whether it's print uh, journalism or whether it's online journalism which is what we are used to now, the online newspapers, uh, is for Gambians to realize that now you can monetize the online press. You can make an online newspaper like the Freedom newspaper, uh, you know, into an income or money-making, uh, gener money-generating venture. In the sense that you have a lot of Google ads, you have a lot of um, sites um, linked to it, each click would generate few pence. Is it pence you call it in America? It's not going to be a dollar, maybe five cents or something like that. But the more people that click on it, the more money you make. And what will make people click on the, uh, an internet link or a news website? What will make people click on it? It's the story headline. What headline are you creating? It's not about the content. It's about the headline. Because the headline is the most important thing in an article, in a news article. The content, what is written, uh, very few people will bother. Really, what is here, they just first of all read bomb cell. As Pandere will say, bomb cell. Breaking news. Now, breaking news, what, what has broke? What, what's going on? So you see, breaking news. Solbaji about to We all, <laughs> Those who can read behind the lines know that Solbaji will never do that. But, you know, yeah, thank you very much, Sister Umi. Thank you. So, you know, when, when, when you see the headline, you click. Unbeknown to you, when you click, Pandera is making money. Now, you create an app, and then this app, you monetize it. The more people that tune in, 
to reprogram the more money he's making. Now, if you make a nice program, educative, let's people tune in because we are all by nature, you know, we want to hear scandals. We, we want to hear about the worst things about other people. <laughs> that is naturally human. It's not just the sisters these days, um, Sister Umi. It's even men want to hear worst things about <laughs> other people. So this way, the more such radio programs are going on, bad things, when you're talking about others and you're talking ill of them, the more people that tune in. So they're making money. So in this new Gambia, the reason why I wanted to record this few minutes audio is to differentiate, is to explain to people that even in the print media in America or in Britain where I am, I have followed the media here for a long time. And one of the best books to understand the current media, especially the, the, in England here, we call them red tops. I don't know about America. Red tops are newspapers that wrote about scandals. They don't write much content, but they will put a lot of pictures in it, very nice, beautiful women in the front page. So you are curious to, to check, you know, attention getters, you know, something like that. Yeah, thank you very much. So, Pandiri, per se, for, for the freedom, he styled himself according to the Fox. If you watch the evolution of Pandiri from the beginning, he started by putting Fox News when he's sitting down. If you watch him sitting, the Fox News will be at his background because he was addicted to the Fox News and he copied that style of, of that, uh, you know, Fox News. Uh, you know, so by copying the style of Fox News, he has evolved himself to be Mr. Nasty. So he can switch from a nicer personality into a nasty personality depending on the audience. How do I draw the audience in? So one of the best books, which when I started reading it, I couldn't put it down, was a book by Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan, you American guy, government in American will remember he was, uh, when a CNN, one of their long time uncle retired, he went to took the job. So this is the book, although for some reason my connection is poor. This book is called The Insider. Okay, I think I'll turn the camera so that uh, people can see it properly. Okay, so this is the book by Piers Morgan. It's called The Insider. Okay, the connection might be weak. Uh, but you can see, you can see, you can see the title very well. So the insider, if anybody can buy this book, when you start reading it, you will not put it down. Okay? Because this, this book will capture everything you want to know about the way Pandere operates. He is just, just with one percent of the average western nasty editors or red tops journalists they will pay girls to entrap footballers they will pay you know young men to entrap rich women they will do anything for a story okay they will do anything to twist the fact they will do whatever if everybody is in this way they'll go that way you know however nice a person is they can turn you to what you are not and it will take ages for you to clean yourself to clarify yourself because they enjoy that and if 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 you follow some of these people they are really actually in reality they are really sad because anybody who try to make money out of creating misery excuse me end up being very sad and depressed because naturally as human beings we want to be feel at home relaxed at ease so anytime you want to make people unhappy, you yourself become unhappy. So, and they became very lonely and isolated. So in this book, Piers Morgan uh, went into detail uh, to talk about how Robert Murdoch, the owner, uh, you know, um, let me show you the book again. Okay, this, this is the book. It's called The Insider. Okay. You can see all the celebrities 
of England to the prince, the Princess Diana, you know, uh, uh, yeah. You know, the book in, in actual fact is talking about his the connections he has with the high class society of England, the rich, the famous, the politicians, the royal family, just anybody who is who. And sometimes how these people actually makes um, they will call him to make a story out of them. Sometimes uh, some of the you know young ladies will tell him that. Oh, you know, Pierce, you know, we're just having a nice time with somebody at such and such place. They are not telling him, send a paparazzi or a photographer, but they're actually telling him, well, if you want to, we will be there. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but because a lot of young Gambians uh, don't actually connect with these things, the moment they see a headline, they believe it. When you hear bomb cell, you know, when you hear breaking news you, you think well it does must be true not all breaking news are actually true and when we evaluate most of what mr park comes up with you will actually analyze that maybe 25 percent is true but 75 percent are mostly false most of the time 75 percent you know so he monetized himself and his paper so this is why i am appealing to a lot of young gambians not to get drawn up or over angry with him he's that's his job he makes money out of doing what he does and this is how he survives uh, this is how he lives his life and really he is um, a sad person uh, because each society goes through stages even the United States the great United States America that we see went through civil war where people end up being killing each other and everything for them to have the U.S. Constitution that you have now to safeguard the rights of each citizen. So we too come out of a very difficult stage. And at this stage we are. This is where we need cool heads. We need Gambians to be sound and sober. Barack Obama said it in one of his speeches. He said democracy can be noisy and messy. And that's, the, that's a reality. You know, when we say democracy, you know, what we are meaning here is that it's not perfect. Democracy itself is not perfect. It's not perfect. To be honest, it's not perfect. If it is perfect, we would have arrested every single member of the Ajami regime now, lock them up in mile two and just relax. Okay? That's what, <laughs> if it is perfect. But no, it is, you know, if we do that, the international community and the rest of the world will be saying, oh, look. They are, it's payback, it's revenge, it's retribution, retributive justice. They will come up with all sorts of terminologies. Before you know, Germany's people will be running back into Europe seeking asylum and all what not. And then we will become a pariah, you know, we'll be blamed for every, everything. No aid, no this, no that. So we have the youths who are really upset that they are seeing Sidin Jai come back. You know, there are a lot of people who are expressing a lot of anger, been getting a lot of messages. You know, people are really upset. Why is he coming back? He should be arrested. The APRC is a political party, it's a registered political party. Being a member of the APRC does not make you a criminal. However, the senior and the top officials who partake or are found guilty of criminal activities, it is those people who will be investigated and eventually be prosecuted. But not just because, you know, Sidin Yai was saying, <clears throat> he was just expressing some of the statements he was saying were dangerous, but it was an opinion. An opinion, such opinions are allowed. So this is why I said democracy can be noisy and messy. But it is imperfect and we, but it is one of the, it's the best form so far. As Winston Churchill says, he says, many types of um, governance that were, practice democracy is the best not although not perfect but at least the best so as gambian youths as young gambians you know we need to embrace this and we don't have to be retaliating to some of the things that jami and his people did and a lot of gambians want retaliation they want payback no that that's not what democracy teaches and it is for you to restrain yourself. It is for you to realize that uh, 
the rule of law although sometimes it can be slow but it can be as equally um you know effective you know in 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 maintaining order in our society and that's what we want we want all of us to be equal free loving and caring because the moment we lose that love and care and compassion don't call yourself a muslim don't call yourself a christian okay because you will be doing things that those same scriptures that you want to be guided by teaches against we have all seen in in syria in other societies where when they took the law into their own hands they go out killing each other for nothing they destroy their own properties their own communities for nothing so the moment we allow anger to take over us it destroys us it destroys us so as gambian brothers and sisters let's not allow the likes of panderi to drive us to be angry at each other and let's not allow such kind of journalism to be the dominant in the west yes it's very famous but people don't take them seriously in england every every day i think the sun newspaper which will put naked breasts of women in page three i think they sell three million copies a day some men will buy and just flip to page three i've worked in construction sites in england here i've worked in offices i've worked in you know as a student in uh, boca king so I, I i you know i know the in and out i know what men do when they're in the construction sites you know so they just buy the pig tree and just look at the picture until they're certified they just wrap it and throw it in the bin so it means they don't actually want to read any single thing in that newspaper okay so that's the reality so let's understand news and always be calm and compose you know as a society our moms and dads they teach us to be calm and composed so let's not forget about some of our upbringings our valuable upbringings and big up to the gambian women really you know for always trying to restrain us and make us calmer so let's not allow the media to make us hate each other you know and um, we are in safe hands because i believe that uh, the coalition government will go through uh, a lot of trials and uh, some changes will be happening, tweaks and things will happen. Uh, you know, the men have really done very well. Yeah, I've been Nigerian, I see the guy. I've been, yeah, that's true. Sister Umi, you are very right. They would have killed him, they would have killed him, but because he knew it is, yeah, even themselves, because some APRC people have been telling me this, they themselves are quietly happy that they are free because they know the African Gambian will not kill them or harm them so they were actually part of a system that they themselves became captured became trapped to be doing some of these criminal activities in public they might not say it but look at Momodo Sabali at uh, you know West, um, Westfield he was there with Gambia's decided was not Momodo Sabali the, one of the, the, the adopted son of Jamme so many of them you know will try now to even embrace our democracy look at the daily observer the daily observer is even trying to you know be you know telling us that you know they too are free to promote whatever they want but a few months ago they wouldn't put any opposition figure in that paper but on the mr barrow's government they are promoting aprc agenda because it's an aprc paper you know so you you see this is why i said democracy in itself is not perfect but it is the best if it is in egypt they would have closed down look at uh, Turkey or something they would go close down all the, <laughs> they would have closed down daily observer seize their computers and machines and tell them you know what pack up you know so although democracy is not perfect you know and some of the instant justice that some of our people want is not going to be long lasting so it's best we now have the chief justice and the attorney general they need about five to six judges to be sworn in we need six judges most of them should be gambians because we want gambians to be involved in the affairs of the state the moment you arrest somebody the police should charge you in 72 hours and then with the reason you are arrested be known to you they have access to a lawyer and then bingo the matter goes through the courts you know so and you are right you know so the system that has been inherited is all over the place they, are, they don't even have enough judges 
because Jami was paying these foreign judges, give them a car, give them a residence, and Gambian judges were paid, I think, $5,000 or $6,000, whilst the average lawyer makes 100000 in one case. So who will leave 100000 dollars in one compound dispute, land dispute, and go and accept $5,000 or $6,000 to be a judge? Whilst the Nigerian judges were paid hugely, and uh, they were also given a free accommodation. They don't pay any rent. They were given a free car with fuel and a driver. So it's like it's lucrative for you to be a foreign judge in the Gambia than to be a Gambian citizen and be a judge. So this is why Gambians would rather go and be private law, uh, lawyers than be um, judges. So the borough government, my personal advice would be let's pay our judges well. Minimum fifteen thousand or twenty thousand dollars per month, so that at least they will not accept any bribe and give them free accommodation, a free car. Um, you know, I, I'm not talking too soon, but we need good judges. The foundation of a democracy need to have this strong judicial system. These people should have rent free if they are not living in their own homes. They need to be rent free. They need to be given a sofa, a driver, make them comfortable because their peers will be earning hundreds of thousands of dollars there are some lawyers who make three million dollars in, in about six months in the gambia even though it was under dictatorship but they were earning a, a lot so how do we encourage gambians to be judges and very good magistrates if we have that okay any dispute will be executed will be you know resolved very very peacefully you know so really the, the, the other book I wanted to demonstrate here, not that I'm showing my books, but when I was a student, really, I was curious about everything, is a book by John Pelga. You know, I, I know a lot of Americans who didn't like John Pelga, but this is John Pelga's book, The Hidden Agendas. Okay? The Hidden Agendas. I, I like reading John Pelga's book because he is anti, not anti-establishment, but he does not try to conform to everything that the... Uh, you know the Western uh, so the society is trying to throw at us, and he tried to expose injustices in America, in South Africa, in Australia, and there is one word he says. He said that in most news headlines, there will always be a hidden agenda, especially when it is about orders. We all do it. All of us will do it, especially our sisters. They are very good at it. You know <laughs> when they're talking about other women, they. Sister Umi, you are excluded. <laughs> you know, today in my WhatsApp update, that's what I was saying. I said, men in our society forget how hard change is. Change is not easy. But men in our society don't know, but women know how hard change is. Now you have your one wife. You are loving and caring to each other. And you are used to maybe having some little quarrels and arguments. All of a sudden... All of a sudden, this lovely man that you think is your friend goes and I another woman. Not only I her, bring her into your home. Now, it's not just you alone there now. There's another person there now. So you want this woman to get used to that instantly. Get used to it. That's my new wife. No niceties. No, some men. You know, I'm talking to myself now as a man. We need to be serious. Change is not easy. Unfortunately, my internet connection is weak, you know, again. But what I'm trying to say that for us to get this jamming system out of our system is going to take a little bit of time. We're still having that jamming mentality in us, you know. You cannot just bring another woman and you want this other false woman to just pretend that nothing is going on everything is fine that, that's not gonna happen because she's used to just you and her just to the two of us maybe a kid or something but you now want her to accept another grown-up woman from outside in here to pretend that nothing is happening i'm happy with it everything is fine no it's change <laughs> give her time to get used to somebody else here who was not here and who should not be part of here that's what going, goes in her head. But as men, we think, well, she's just jealous, you know, she, she, you know. No.
No, see, you give her time to get used to that grown up woman, you know, taking up her ass pace. Similarly, similarly, we will have to give each other time to get used to the chaos of not having that guy that we are all afraid of, to having a guy who is soft speaking, a guy who is very nice. <laughs> Mr. Barrow is actually a very simple, very nice person, you know, who will very quiet to a guy, Mr. Jame, who is, the, the, you know, the pompose, fearful, aggressive, arrogant, domineering, everything. So it's going to take time for us to all clear it in our head that, look, it's a new system. Let's embrace each other. Let's be loving. And let's not allow... Uh, division we will have political you know as for the summary road today consensus we will have different consensus we will not be agreeing on the same things because even in our own homes we will not be but actually let's look for a center ground where we all meet and agree there to disagree but we look at the bigger picture that we say no to violence within the politics to aggression uh, to a lot of um, injustice and unfairness if we call ourselves Muslims we call ourselves Christians or even good Gambians we try our best to rise above um, violence or violence in our politics now the biggest job now the biggest job now the borough government have is the, the, the trying to quench the anger in the society because a lot of people have been it is now that for me personally i'm coming to know that most of what we're talking about is the tip of the iceberg the amount of people who've been saying my husband is missing even today there was a lady in spain who messaged to say husband something judge you see can't remember the first name it's been missing for nearly I think two years or something like that and i, I was just shocked because some a lot of people have been silent with these things so people are just coming out now xyz is not being seen what who should i go to i mean it's the tip of the iceberg so how do we find give justice to most of these people and how do we locate these people how do we make sure so we should all be suggesting ideas now my suggestion is that we get back into the commonwealth as soon as possible I talk to the british authorities because they have very good police officers who can you know detect a lot of things if, if hidden graves and everything they have these machines america is far away but britain they are they have a lot of retired very excellent police officers who can help us get back into the commonwealth take these people down there you know talk to nigerians also to provide experts senegalese to provide experts and you have that special team who will not be part of the government but they will be helping families identify graves identify those issues and then the prosecution can start even even after the three years but at least we start somewhere to identify issues to make sure wounds are healed because a lady um somebody sent me a question to say that if you know we found uh, a grave of somebody who died and we had end up finding out who that person is should we take that uh, pray janaza that is pray the islamic rites of prayers on that grave or should we uh, exhume the body so there are a lot of complications that even the islamic scholars now have to think out of the box they have to think out of the box how do we deal with such situations because there are going to be new scenarios you know that we have to take care of this is why i'm saying the religious communities should stop fighting each other you are sufi you are this you are that. we don't have time for that what we have time for you know, is for us to remedy what we have now.
Big one. Five,